Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. It was a couple of years ago, there was a man that was involved with the music industry. And there were some people that he knew in the music industry and he respected them. One day they were sitting together and they were talking about the future, they were talking about God, and what they think is going to happen, etc. One of the questions that he asked him is, what are you going to do in the future when trials and tribulations come about? And one of them said, it's all in the hands of Allah. Well, this man that asked the question, it triggered him to ask more questions because he's never heard this word of Allah as he did with these individuals. So he said, who is Allah and what is that? When they told him what Allah was or who Allah was, this triggered more questions. But as they were going along talking about their religion and letting him know that they were Muslim, he automatically categorized them and said, okay, they're a religion of the East and they're a different kind of people and I'm someone that's different. So he thought he could ask one question that would trigger them and would stop the conversation to move on to another one. That question was, what is your opinion about Jesus? What do you say about Jesus? Mind you, this individual, this person was raised as a Christian and he believed that Jesus, we turn to him and go through him to get to God. But the answer that these individuals gave him was far more greater than he expected. One of them said that a Muslim cannot be a Muslim unless he believes in the prophethood of Jesus. This man was amazed. He thought that they didn't even, didn't even acknowledge Jesus. When they started to speak about Jesus, it led him more to ask more questions. So he mentioned a fundamental aspect of the belief in Islam towards prophets, being Jesus, being one of them, that you cannot be a Muslim unless you believe in his prophethood, that he has been given the revelation by God and he has been ordered with that mission. Then he touched on a spiritual aspect of the belief in Jesus showing that Jesus was one of the best people that turned to Allah and Allah chose him to send the message and that he always turned to Allah and no one else. As a matter of fact, the trials and tribulations were a sign from Allah towards mankind by giving you the best of people to show you as a model. Then touching on an intellectual aspect, the person went on. As this person is being amazed and being educated about a reality of Islam that he thought was totally something foreign and different, he went on to say how Jesus turned to God and didn't turn to himself, how he was not an independent source of guidance. Rather, he was someone that God chose to send the message because he was the best of people. And he had miracles, but all of those miracles were on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessing him and granting him with those miracles, being that Allah, the creator of Jesus, was the source. So touching on it from a fundamental, spiritual, and intellectual aspect, all of this agreed with his nature, being that he believed in a creator, and that there was one, and he created every single thing. And through that, he chooses from his creation and does what he wills with them. This reminds me of a beautiful, beautiful verse in the Quran on the nature of Jesus and the miraculous nature of Jesus. As we know in the Quran, there are many verses that talk about the virtues of the prophets, showing you their miraculous nature, showing you their powers, if you will, what they had that were characteristics that went beyond natural characteristics of men. But then Allah ties it and shows you that none of this would have happened except with his permission. We see in the chapter of Maryam, which is the 19th chapter, in the 30th verse, Allah mentions in this chapter of Maryam in the verses before this verse how, how Maryam السلام, peace be upon her, Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, faced trials and tribulations from her people. And we see due to the power of Allah and his independent power and abilities how he placed Jesus in the womb of Mary without any father. So Mary came to her people pregnant and we talked about the story before. She comes to her people pregnant and they are amazed. And they are saying, how can you, oh, the sister of Aaron, how can you be of a person of this nature when your father nor mother was known to do this? So what happens? Miriam points to Jesus. Jesus is in her hands because she conceived him earlier by herself. She points to Jesus. And we see in this 30th verse, Allah the Exalted says, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيَّ Jesus says, as a baby, Allah mentions where Jesus says, he said, I am a slave of Allah. He has given me the book and made me a messenger. So this is a fundamental milestone in Islam. 
that we believe that Jesus is a prophet and we believe at the same time he is a slave of Allah. And this one verse shows the fundamental aspect of prophethood in Islam. That they are messengers, they have miraculous nature that Allah has given them, but at the same time, on top of all of this, they are slaves of Allah. Repeating the verse, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ أَتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيَّ He said, I am a slave of Allah. He has given me the book and made me a messenger. Look at the sequence. The first thing that Jesus mentions out of his mouth as a baby is that I am a slave of Allah. Firstly, in Islam, we believe that Jesus spoke as a baby because it is mentioned in the Quran. And we don't see this present in any other religion or way of life, that Jesus spoke as a baby. This could lead one to worship Jesus because he has this characteristic of speaking as a baby, which shows a miraculous nature. But due to the rest of the verse that he says, Atani al kitab, I have been given a book, wa ja'alani nabiyya, and, and been made a prophet. Who gave him the book? Who made him a prophet? The one that he is a slave of, who is Allah. So tying the verse in to the greatness of Allah at the end of the day, seeing that Jesus has these beautiful characteristics, that he is the best of mankind, that he has been chosen as a baby to speak, which is, doesn't happen. It is not a natural characteristic. It goes beyond the capabilities of human beings. The first thing he says is the fundamental belief of God, that he was a slave of God, Abdullah, and that he has been given the book, which is to tell the people, which is the Injil, which is the, the gospel, and he has been made a prophet. So this is a beautiful aspect of Islam, that Jesus is a prophet. And he has been given miraculous abilities, but at the same time, he is a messenger. So we see the miraculous birth of Jesus mentioned in the Quran, how Allah magnifies him and makes him great by showing that he spoke as a baby. But at the same time, he was still a slave of Allah. Touching on the life of Jesus, what about after he was a baby? What took place in his life? We see in the chapter number five, verse number 110, where Allah mentions his conversation with Jesus on the day of judgment when he says, then Allah will ask, O Jesus, son of Mary, recall my favor upon you and your mother, how I strengthened you with the Holy Spirit, so you could speak to the people in the cradle and in maturity, how I taught you the book, wisdom, and the Torah, and the, and the gospel, how you were able to make the figure of a bird out of clay by my permission, how you breathed into it and changed it into a living bird by my permission how you could heal the born blind and the lepers by my permission, how you could bring the dead body back to life by my permission, how I protected you from the violence of the children of Israel when you came to them with clear signs and the unbelievers among them said, this is nothing but clear sorcery. So we see in this beautiful verse, the life of Jesus, how Allah mentions after him being born as a baby and speaking, how he gave him and assisted him with the angel Gabriel, allowing this to happen. Then Allah mentions some beautiful, miraculous things that took place, also showing the fundamental belief in Islam towards Jesus, that Jesus did get clay and that he formed a, and formed a bird and brought light, breathed life into it, and how Jesus cured the people that were sick, but he was protected by Allah by the creator of the heavens and the earth when the people of the children of Israel wanted to kill him. As we see the trial and tribulation of Jesus took place, as were the trials and tribulations of many of the prophets, as a matter of fact, of all of the prophets that came before and after him. So Jesus during his life had miracles. He breathed life into creation. He cured people by the power of Allah. And this is where the Muslim believes in the oneness of Allah and recognizing that the source of all of these miracles that were given to Jesus from the first minute of his birth wouldn't have happened except without the pleasure and permission of his creator. If you notice also in this verse, Allah mentions a beautiful point. Linguistically, we see how Allah repeats one thing. If you notice how he mentions after Jesus getting the clay and putting, forming it into a bird and breathing into it life, what does he say? Be idni, with my permission. And then after that, 
he mentions how Jesus cured the blind and the people that had leprosy. What does he say after that? Be idni, again, repeating, with my permission. Then after that, when he says, And when you brought the dead out, he's saying again, with my permission, ensuring it three times that without the permission of God, it wouldn't have happened. Reminding even Jesus, the best of people, that all of this happened with my permission. Then showing him when you were faced with a trial and tribulation, yes, you helped people. Yes, you cured the, you cured the sick by my permission. But remember when you were faced with a trial that when the people wanted to kill you, what happened? We helped you. So in this verse, it shows a manifestation of the greatness of God, the oneness of God. And this is what those people were trying to tell that individual that it's all in the hands of Allah. Okay, so this individual was, has been told about the birth and life of Jesus which led him to ask another question. He was being educated about this miraculous religion of Islam and the miraculous nature of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him and his mother and their virtue in Islam and that they were even virtuous. So obviously the question came to, do you believe in the crucifixion of Jesus? Did Jesus die? To whereupon they told him that Jesus is not dead. We do not believe that Jesus was crucified. And they mentioned the verse in the Quran in the chapter of Nisa, the woman, the 157th verse. If you see through the verse of 153 through 159, it speaks about the children of Israel and the statements that they made. Amongst them is the aspect of Jesus not being crucified. The 157th verse where Allah says, They say, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the Rasul of Allah, the Messenger of Allah. Whereas in fact, neither did they kill him, nor did they crucify him, but they thought they did. Those who differ therein are in doubt. They have no real knowledge. They follow nothing but merely conjecture. Certainly they did not kill him. So this is a confirmation in the basic doctrine of Islam towards Prophet Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, that we believe that Jesus was not crucified. Someone was placed there and it was made as though to them that Jesus was crucified. Rather, Allah raised him up and brought him to him. How? We don't know. But Allah has confirmed it in the Quran as Allah even says here at the very end of the verse, and they certainly did not kill him. Ensuring, even though he told you earlier in the verse that he was not killed nor crucified, he says at the very end of it, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا And certainly they did not kill him. So in Islam, we do not believe that Jesus was crucified. In Islam, we believe that Jesus spoke as a baby. In Islam, we believe that Jesus has a miraculous nature of curing the people that were sick, bringing out the dead, and also breathing life into inanimate objects, inanimate things. But none of this would have happened except without the permission of the one who told you in the Quran, Allah. And we also believe in conclusion that he did not die, that he was raised up to Allah. He was not crucified. So the belief in Islam towards Jesus is a miraculous one, and this led this person to come into the religion of Islam when he heard this nature of Jesus, which agreed with his natural inclination of a being that was in control of everything. So with that, we see the miraculous religion of Islam towards Prophet Jesus. And if we continue to look towards the other prophets, we see how the manifestation of the creator of the heavens and the earth's power is laid upon each one of them with beautiful stories that have beautiful lessons for us. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Thank you.